Hold on. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants Hangout. My name is Joe Gorowski, and I'll sort of be your host for today. Uh, we're really excited to be celebrating beautiful birds today by taking another virtual field trip to the Virginia Zoo. It's always a lot of fun to meet some of the staff at the zoo, as well as meet some of the amazing ambassador animals they have for us today. So I'm going to let uh, our awesome staff at the Virginia Zoo take over. We're so excited uh, for today's hangout and to meet some of the and actually, I'm jumping into next month's hangout. It's marvelous mammals right now. So we're really excited to meet some of the marvelous mammals at the Virginia Zoo. Um, I'll let you guys take over now. And uh, we're excited for a good hangout today. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. How are you? So I'm Jess. This is Stephanie and Jenna. And we do have marvelous mammals today. We are going to talk about birds on the 6th coming up. So keep an eye out for that. Today, um, we have a few animals that we are going to introduce you to that are part of the mammal group. Um, one thing that we do want to point out is that mammals are very, very diverse, and they can have very different traits or adaptations that help them survive in their environment. So the few things that animals have in common, they are usually very furry, or they have some sort of hair on their bodies. They produce milk for their young and they are what we call endothermic or warm blooded. And basically that means that if they get cold, they can warm themselves up. And that's different from all of the other animals that we've met through exploring by the seat of your pants because mammals have found all sorts of different ways that they keep that heat trapped in their body. So we're gonna meet a few different animals who have different body coverings that are all hair, even though they look really crazy and weird. So first off, we are going to go over to Stephanie, and she's going to introduce our first animal ambassador and our first marvelous mammal. Slide out. Hi, guys. So right here behind me is Dimitri. We'll get a little bit better of a view of him. He's kind of up tall. Uh, he is a prehensile tail porcupine. So you can see he has this long tail that he has wrapped right around this tree branch. He's normally going to be found in South America, so he's going to be a rainforest porcupine. He's going to be up in the tops of the trees, and he's going to be moving around eating fruits and vegetables that he can find. Now, he may not look like he's covered in hair, but he's actually covered in quills. So on him are all these quills that he has, which quills are actually just a modified type of hair. So he uses those quills in a lot of different ways. One way that he can use them is for shock absorption. If he would fall from a tree, he can use those quills to protect himself. He can also use those quills for protection as well from predators. So what he can do is he can stand all those quills up and make himself look really, really big. And then he can rattle the quills and shake them around and make lots and lots of noises with them. So that's another way that he uses his quills. On those quills, there are barbed edges. So they're kind of like the tips of a fishing hook. Now, it's actually a myth that porcupines can throw their quills or shoot their quills. So even though Dimitri is standing right here behind me, he's not going to be able to throw quills at me. What he can do, though, is stand those up. And if a predator comes to try and bite him or to eat him, then they get a face full of quills. He can release them and he can run away while they have to try and figure out how to get the quills out of their face. So right now, Dimitri's eating a piece of sweet potato. That is one of his favorite treats here. We'll see if he'll come a little, nope, he's still got a little bit more to eat. So you can't see him a little too close, but he is using those front feet to kind of hold on. He has claws on those front feet to grab onto the tree branches, to climb around in the tree branches. And then also he can use them to hold his food. He does have claws on his back as well. And like I said, he has that long tail that he can use, that prehensile tail. There is he a little bit closer. You can kind of see he has a big nose. He uses that to find all the fruits and vegetables. And he's gonna, <laughs> he's looking at you guys. He's gonna use that nose to snip out any fruits and veggies that he can find. He's just an herbivore. He's not gonna eat any types of meat. So he eats fruits, vegetables, flowers, leaves, roots, any of those different things that he can find in the treetops. So with all that, he does have very large teeth. He's part of the rodent family. So he has teeth that are constantly growing. So he's going to need to chew on things like bark or maybe some pieces of the branches so that he can kind of wear his teeth down. So he has big, wide teeth. He can even crack open the shells of nuts with those. So he has very strong teeth. So he is one of our marvelous mammals. Like we said, he doesn't look like he has hair, but he has all those quills, which is a type of hair. His belly is also a little bit soft. 
He breathes air and he is also going to nurse from his mom when he is young. So he's one of our more exciting mammals that we brought. But then you can also meet another mammal which has a different type of body covering and you're going to get to see him next. So we're just going to move the camera back over to the other side. All right. So another mammal that, and this guy, yeah, looks completely different from the one you just met. Um, Kind of doesn't look like a typical mammal at all. This guy doesn't even look like he has hair. Um, but if you do look closely, he does have little hairs. Maybe I'm kind of scooting a little bit. Um, so this is Vigo, and he is our three-banded armadillo. So this is actually, there are 20 different species of armadillos, and this is the only kind that can actually roll up into this perfect little ball. Um, that's kind of a myth that people think all armadillos can do that, but it's really just these three bandits. Um, he's kind of got his little claws tucked in, um, but he has very long claws. These guys are insectivores, so he's going to use those long claws to dig into termite mounds and kind of dig around and root around in the ground to eat bugs. Um, here at the zoo, he eats bugs. He also eats um, fruits and veggies, too. Um, they have a really good sense of smell, um, so he can kind of smell around and find all those bugs and dig them out. So... Um, he, kind of like Dimitri's quills were made out of, it's called keratin. It's just like our hair and our fingernails. This is what Vigo's shell or carapace, as it's called, is made out of. Um, so it's really cool. And it's mostly for his protection. Um, you know, he's a little guy, so he's going to protect himself by rolling up into this ball uh, to keep himself safe. He's going to tuck in his um, sensitive little tummy. Um, tuck in his face and his hands, keep himself safe. And then, so this is one of the types of armadillos we have, and Stephanie's actually going to come in with um, a kind that looks totally different from Vigo. So this is Dora, and Dora here is what's called a screaming hairy armadillo. So she looks a lot different. She can't roll up into a ball like Vigo can. What she is able to do is run around really fast, and then she can also kind of curl just halfway, but she has these really sharp claws. You can kind of see those sharp claws on her. And then she's gonna either dig a burrow, or she is going to make a really, really loud noise. So the noise that they can make sounds pretty much like a scream or a growl. So that is where they got their name, the Screaming Hairy Armadillo. So when they are going to try and frighten off predators, they're going to make that noise. She's being a little wiggly here, so I'm just going to hold on to her. She's Can you lift her up real quick? It's hard for our, the classrooms to see because the bar that's across the bottom of the screen. Yes. Oh, I can't see her. <laughs> um, so with Dora here, she is going to use her hearing as most of one of her more stronger senses. She also has a sticky tongue which she can kind of stick down into the burrows for insects. Let me just grab some more food here. She's getting a little squirrely. Um, so she can also use her sticky tongue and then she can as well use her hearing. So she has really, really strong hearing. Now she is covered in armor plates as well as Vigo was. So she has those plates that she has on her head. And then she also has something kind of cool where each armadillo has a different plate on their head. So just like we have different fingertips or fingerprints, our armadillos each have a head plate that's unique to them. So they all have a different head plate. Now they don't see really, really well. They are going to mostly be nocturnal. So she's usually gonna be kind of down in a burrow, but she is gonna use that hearing. And then you see all this hair all over her belly here is actually used for sensory. So she is actually going to kind of use those hairs to feel, and she can feel insects that are burrowing down in the ground. She can also feel if there is kind of something coming. So she's gonna feel the vibrations of anything that's coming towards her. And then she can kind of decide if she's gonna hide, if she's gonna go into a burrow, or if she's gonna come out any further. So she has all those little hairs that she uses. They kind of keep her warm. And then she can also run away or dig a really fast burrow. So she can dig burrows really, really quickly. So this is a, just a different type of armadillo. So she has all the hair on her back as well as on her belly. And she's just slightly different from Vigo in the fact that she can't roll up and do a ball. So we are going to meet our last mammal coming up.
who is kind of coming out on our tree for us. And she's one of our bigger mammals that you're going to get to see. She's one of the most popular ones here at the zoo. So you're going to get to meet her next. <laughs> all right. So this is a mammal, right? This is what you think of as a mammal. Look at all of this hair. <laughs> So this is Casey, um, took her time coming out. She is a sloth, so you know, they're known for being slow. Um, she is a two-toed sloth, so if you can see her front feet, she has two toes, um, nice long claws that help her hang on. Um, I'm gonna be feeding her some fruits and veggies, her favorite. And these guys, they spend their whole life high up in the trees. Um, they're from South America and the rainforest. So, you know, anything that would be growing in trees, leaves, um, fruits, twigs, things like that is what she would be eating. Um, so all of this hair that I mentioned is actually really interesting and special to her. Um, she has got beautiful shades of brown in her hair, um, but it's very porous. So I mentioned she lives in the rainforest, it's very wet. So in the wild, she would actually be very green. Um, it's porous, so all that water will soak in and actually algae will grow, um, which, you know, she's lost her slow. So that's kind of gonna be her defense. Um, she will kind of turn green and just really blend in with that tree that she's living in, which is really cool. Um, and they'll, so the, the algae will help them blend in, but it also, um, they can absorb the nutrients from the algae. So that's really interesting. She loves banana. <laughs> um, their hair is cool too. It actually parts on her belly and it grows downwards. Um, so the rain kind of just slides right down. Very cool. One of my favorite things about sloths, you know, one of those gross fun facts. Who doesn't love those? Um, she, because everything is slow with a sloth, her metabolism is very slow. Um, they actually will only poop about once a week. So she'll climb down from her tree and use the bathroom only once a week. She's showing her best side. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, Casey. <laughs> oh my goodness. Very slow. Something was up. <laughs> okay. Do you guys mind if I have my face? Oh, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get her to you guys. I'm going to try. Jenna is much taller than I am. I know. So one thing that we do want to talk about while we're looking at Casey's better side, um, all of the mammals that we've shown you guys today do have one really important trait in common. And that trait is that they actually give birth to live young. Now, that doesn't mean that every mammal gives birth to live young. I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with the platypus and the echidna who actually lay eggs, but they are still considered mammals because they have hair. They do produce milk in kind of a weird way and they are warm blooded. So even though there are some mammals that are a little weird, that's just because they sort of popped up a little bit earlier in our earth's history and they hadn't quite figured out the best way to do things yet. So we've got our monotremes, that's what those guys are called, the ones that lay eggs. Mammals like Casey here and our two armadillos and our prehensile tail porcupine are what we call placentals. That means that they give birth to live young. And then you guys might also be familiar with marsupials, which include kangaroos, wallabies. And here in Virginia, where we're at, we actually have the Virginia opossum. And the Virginia opossum is the only marsupial in North America. So it's kind of interesting to see all of these different ways that mammals have figured out how to survive. But despite all of those differences, they do all have those traits in common that make them mammals. So how much, if, if you guys are ready, we unfortunately are just going to have to sit here and stare at Casey. I know you're all very upset about that. <laughs> so Stephanie's gonna pop back in and we are going to do our question and answer session. Uh, so good thing I'm short. I'm gonna say, <laughs> okay, you guys, I'll just cover her better side. And we're gonna start with your questions. Yeah, so we're gonna start going down the list. Um, so I apologize if I say any of the names incorrectly, but Miss Luden's class, are you there? Yeah, and just uh, noting too, so I got kicked out beforehand, so Je I'm back in, Jesse's back in, Joe can head out to the other hangout as well, so okay. I, can help guide, I can help guide the Q&A, guys. <laughs> so no worries about pronunciation. Okay. Um, 
Thank, so thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And what a cool sloth. I know, we're, we're, it's awful that we have to watch a sloth. It's the worst. Um, so yeah, Ms. Ludden's class, if you guys want to start, uh, we'll just need classes to demute their own microphones. So right now, because I had to sign in late, I don't have the ability to demute your mics. Sorry for that. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to kick us off with a question, little microphones, there you go, you got it. So go right ahead, guys. Does anyone have a question? Hello? Yes, sir. Hi. Yes, sir. I'll actually, I'll actually, what's the question? We don't have time to do this. Do the sloths have natural predators? Do the sloths have natural predators? One of their main predators is actually the harpy eagle. And so when they are up in the tops of the trees, the harpy eagles can kind of swoop down and grab them off the treetops. Any other natural predators they would have, they're more... Um, going to be susceptible to predators when they go down onto the ground. When they're hiding in the tree, they're not so much. But any kind of large cats or dogs, and unfortunately also people. Mm -hmm. But when we're not thinking about people, I just want to note that if you guys want to watch videos of harpy eagles eating sloths, it's like the coolest thing ever. It's kind of, you know, we're sad for the sloth, but it's super interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, go to Ms. Medell's <laughs> class. Oh. <laughs> we won't just plug its ears. Uh, so, Ms. Lindell's class, if you guys just want to demute your mic, little microphone symbol at the top of your screen, you're good. There you go. Nope. Um, how fast can an armadillo build a burrow? Did you get that? Uh, I, very fast. So, we actually <laughs> present them on grounds, and when we have them outside, we have to be very careful that we don't we don't let them dig a hole too quickly because they're within like the span of five minutes, they can completely cover themselves in dirt. So um, very, very quickly, they have those sharp claws that help them do that. And that's a very good defense for them to be able to get away from predators. Great. Good question. Uh, all right, let's open Ms. Curtin's group. Uh, if you guys have a question, come on up. I think I've been to that zoo in Virginia. Just do you know what I'm going Yep, give us just a second. Hey, there you go. And I didn't pre-screen pre -screen this question, so we'll see what we got. Um, so, so how, so how can the three plated armadillo roll into a ball? The three banded armadillo, so he has different bands on his back that are, he's got hard plates and then he's got soft sections and he can roll those up. So kind of the way he's built, he's got sections of him that can move. Mm -hmm. And then what he can also do is he could tuck his head in and his tail in and form a complete ball. Mm -hmm. So when he's in a complete ball, then the predators are not able to bite at his shell because his shell is very hard and can protect him. Like a roly poly, but an armadillo. If you've mm -hmm. ever seen a pill bug roll up into a ball, it's very similar. Very cool. Uh, all right, let's head to Miss Presley's class. If you guys have a question, come on up. Again, sorry for the trouble, everyone, with the microphones, but I appreciate you guys doing so well. There you go. You're good. All right. Say your name. Hi, my name is Shyla. Um, I have. Um, how old is the armadillo that rolls up into a ball? <laughs> we just we were just talking about that earlier. <laughs> He's about uh, 13 years old, um, and those guys can actually live 15 to 20 years, so he is kind of getting a little older. <laughs> but yeah, they can live um, a good long life, and especially here at the Virginia Zoo, he's going to live a very long time. You know, excellent vet care, plenty of food to eat, mm -hmm. no predators to worry about. Mm -hmm. Living the dream. Uh, <laughs> cool, guys. All right, so we'll do our last of the first round of questions. We'll go to Ms. Rodriguez's class. You guys have a question? Come on up, and then we'll do a whole other round. Lots of time for questions. But yeah, so just, sorry again, just demute that mic, little microphone symbol top of your screen, and you'll be set. You click that, I'll let you know when you're good. There you go. Um, how do sloths protect themselves? <laughs> I would say mostly by hiding, really. So I mentioned how the algae will grow on her hair and kind of make her very green so that she's camouflaged in. So, that's really their main defense is just sort of being still and slow like they are <laughs> and just kind of blending in to the trees. They can also make a sound that's like, ah, <laughs> so I don't know if that would help or not, but she doesn't. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I guess that's what, they, that's what they use against the harpy eagle when it comes in. It's just a scream of terror. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right, guys, let's go back to Ms. Ludden's class. Uh, if you guys have a second question, go right ahead. Uh, oh, hold on. What sort of habitat the habitat does a uh, porcupine live in? The the prehensile tail porcupine that we have that you saw, Dimitri, he's a rainforest porcupine. So he's typically going to be up in the treetops. He's going to spend about 60% of his time in the trees. Um, and then he's only going to come down when he's moving around to different trees. But there are also uh, North American porcupines as well and African crested porcupines. So North American porcupines young in the floor. Um, they might be in a burrow. They might find a hollow log to go in. There's also African crested porcupine, which are the largest porcupines. Um, they're on the ground as well, but they're also going to find somewhere that they can kind of dig and burrow, and they're going to be found more kind of in the um, the drier areas that you might find. I am so sorry I missed the first half of this hangout. This was, like, awesome. This is very cool, guys. <laughs> I uh, also want to note for classes who might be watching online, if you guys are watching on YouTube Live and you want to write in a question in the chat bar, I can pass it directly on to the ladies at the zoo, so please do uh, do that. Uh, but yeah, so let's head back to Miss uh, Lindell's class for a second question. Go right ahead, guys. Um, how long can a sloth um, live in the claws grow? How long can the claws grow? Yeah. Oh. I don't know how long that is, but I'm terrible at measuring. Probably like three inches right now. <laughs> Probably like three to four, mm -hmm. three to five inches. They can't grow too long because they're curved. So think of like, this is my claw and this is my paw. Um, if they grew too long, then it would start growing into her hands. So usually in the wild, they would be climbing on trees and things. And she's got lots of things to climb on and that sort of helps keep it down. Do we do any kind of trimming with her? She just did a little nail trimming. So we do, and we do a little bit of nail trimming here just to make sure that they don't grow too long. But it, in the wild, climbing all those trees keeps them at about three and a half inches long. Okay. To go back to an earlier question really quickly, ladies, are they able to use that as a means of defense? Could they, are they fast enough to use their claw to attack something or? They are, and no. they also have a grip. Mm -hmm. So yeah. with PC, <laughs> how she's gripping onto the tree and she has one claw loose, those other ones are not going to come off. Like if you went to try and pry them off, they're really gripped on. So she can use her strong grip and then she can use those claws as a form of defense because she can grab on and pull something to her or they can be sharp, uh, a little sharper in the wild too as they're climbing the trees. So she mm -hmm. can use that. They also are going to typically have some kind of stronger teeth up front that they can use for defense too. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, let's head back to Miss Curtin's class for a second question. Go right ahead, guys. How does the sloth move very super super slow when not that slow? How does she move super duper slow? So they are just built to move yeah. slow. So they have a slow metabolism. Everything about them is kind of built to be a slow moving animal. And so <laughs> we can't see her face because she's coming behind you. Um, so with that slow metabolism, they actually they have a chambered stomach that is almost kind of like the kind of how a cow or a ruminant has a chambered stomach. She doesn't chew cud like they do, but because their digestion is so slow, it just makes everything about them. Mm -hmm. So movements, things like that. Uh, they don't move as slow as the sloths that you may have seen in the movie Zootopia. They definitely <laughs> move faster than that. Faster than that. Uh, <laughs> if Casey wasn't getting a, her, her food and just kind of hanging out here, she might be moving around the tree a little bit more. Not so fast that we can't catch up to them, but she can <laughs> move faster than you think. <laughs> Awesome. Also, I love that kid's shirt. So please, thank. I love anyone who's willing to wear tie dye. Way to go! Uh, <laughs> let's go check in with Miss Presley's class. If you guys have a second question, come on up. Hi, my name's Anthony. Why? How does the the um the the sloth um how does he like do stuff does he do stuff for fun <laughs> um her idea of what we might think of as fun <laughs> is probably just eating that's fun yeah and she likes to sleep she she tends to sleep a lot um of course she gets enrichment like all of the other animals at the zoo so she does get different smells and things like that but because she is kind of a slower moving animal. Um, her favorite things involve things that she can do very slowly, I would say, <laughs> like eating and sleeping. So she does different 
She gets like different brows. She loves hibiscus flowers. So that's something that's fun to her. Uh, another thing that's fun is when she gets to go to new locations. If she gets to go out in the sunshine, because uh, we when it's not cold out, um, she can go outside and we have some different places for her to go. She likes to take naps in the sun too. Mm -hmm. There we go. So eating and sleeping. Yeah. Paint <laughs> <laughs> the town red. Uh, all right, let's go to Ms. Rodriguez's group. <laughs> um, how long do sloths live? Um, well, in the wild, it's going to be maybe like, like yeah, like about 15 years. Um, but Casey, gosh, how old is she? She's in her early 22. 20s. Yeah, she'll be 23. So, um, you know, again, and, you know, in a zoo setting like here, um, she can live much longer, you know, with the 30, 40. Yeah, you know, up to 40 or so. Um, you know, good vet care, plenty of food, shelter. Don't you know, food. Plenty of food. <laughs> <laughs> we literally are just sitting here, just, like feeding her yeah. into her mouth. Now, it can't get easier than that. Yeah. So, exactly. uh, so she will awesome. live a very long time here. Awesome. Uh, ladies, do you guys have time for another five questions? One from each class? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, let's head back to Miss Ludden's class then. If you guys have a third question. Does anybody have a question? Oh. Oh no, it was already taken. It was I, I was wondering who our mystery class was. Our mystery class? Oh, what from when we started at the beginning? Yes. Oh, the mystery class was Miss Harden's group. They didn't show up. I didn't know where they were from. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> we don't have any more questions. Oh, right. Well, if you it think about the sloth, it oh, yeah. can be about think mammals in general, mm -hmm. even if it's animals that we didn't see today. <laughs> That's true. So you guys can think about that. If you do have any, we'll come back to you. Uh, in the meantime, let's go back to Miss Lindell's class. You guys have a third question. How long do the armadillos live? The armadillos can live different varying. They can live anywhere from about 15 to 20 years old. Mm -hmm. um, on average, is usually about 15 to 16. So they also have a nice long life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. All right. Let's go to Miss Carton's group. Wow, there's like 20 kids with their hands up in that one class. I love it. Oh, the choices are so difficult. Bailey, what do we got? How old can the sloth, how old is the sloth? Uh, this year, in April. How old was that? We just missed the age, sorry. 23. 23, we're, we're on an eight. We're on an age-based question kick right now. We're yeah. very excited how old things are. Um, all right, Miss Presley's group, if you guys have a question. Hi, my name is Jacoby, and I'm wondering what do sloths do for the winter? Usually, for Casey in the winter, she gets to stay inside. So she gets to stay in a building that's 74 degrees mm -hmm. all year long. Um, in the summertime, Casey does go outside, so if it's about 60 degrees Fahrenheit um, or above and it's nice and sunny, she actually has an outdoor enclosure. The sloths in the wild, it's not usually going to get as cold as winter like here in the United States. So where they're from in South America, it's usually going to be more kind of tropical, not too cold all year round. So they kind of maybe just slow down or eat more food. Yeah. So there's no polar vortex in Brazil, eh? No um, polar vortex, no. Nope. All right, good to avoid that. Uh, all right, we'll wrap up with one last question for Mr. Rodriguez's class. You guys want to end us off? Go right ahead. Where does it usually sleep at? Which animal? The sloths. So they're usually going to sleep up in the trees. So I don't know if you guys can tell on our tree branch, there's kind of like a, a kind of corner area. There we go. So they might find a corner that they can kind of hold, hold onto the tree and kind of sit on the tree that way. Um, they sometimes will lean back on a tree and have a tree branch below their back so that they can kind of lay on the tree. Casey actually has a little bucket, um, big bucket, I should say, that hangs up in her enclosure and she typically sleeps with that with a blanket and stuffed animal. It's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to mention something and I don't know if you guys addressed this in your presentation. If you did, I apologize. Uh, but with sloths, it's an animal that gets taken for the pet trade a lot, and it's something that people feel that they can come up and touch in the wild. Can you guys speak to how people should react with an animal if they were running to a sloth in the wild? Yes, a thousand percent. We would love to do that. Thank you. 
So sloths are obviously very cute. You see Casey here, and she's looking up at you with her big brown eyes. But sloths are <laughs> wild animals, like a lot of animals, exotic animals that we see in the pet trade. <laughs> and it's important to remember that they're not used to being around people the way that your dog or your cat at home is. So where dog or cats are really, really great to be in our houses, and they love being around us, and they're very well suited to be on our couches if you let them and all of that. Casey is a very, very special animal that requires a lot of special care. And because we're a zoo, we're able to give that to her. She requires a very special diet. She has to get special vitamins, or it's, I guess it's a fatty acid that she has to have on her food. She needs these really nice big things to climb on. And it's just almost impossible for someone in their private home to give her the care that she needs. So if you're thinking about you go to South America and you see a sloth and you're like, oh, it's a sloth. They're slow. I can totally catch them and pick them up. That sloth is probably very, very happy where it's at. You wouldn't like it if someone came into your bedroom while you were asleep and just picked you up and took you home. That's really scary for you. So for animals that we see in their native habitat, they're probably very, very happy where they're at. And the best way to interact with them is to take a couple of pictures, tell them how awesome they are, and then keep going on. Yeah, give them their space and keep going on your merry way. Awesome. Thank you so, so much for that. I really do encourage kids to actually tell them how awesome they are, though. Like, take the picture and then be like, you are an awesome great. Star. That's the best part. Um, ladies, before we wrap up, is there any last messages you guys want to share generally about where kids can find more information, about how they can get excited about mammals in their own backyards? Anything else? Uh, so you can always check our, our website, thevirginiazoo.org. So we do have different information about our animals on there. We also encourage everyone to do some research, some places that you can find a lot of information. Um, the IUCN Red List. It's a list where they keep track of all the endangered species um, and has what their status there. So you can get some information about those. Um, also on National Geographic, there's lots of information on your website as well. Um, or just watching different videos from different zoos and learning more. There's lots of fact sheets that different zoos put out there. So you can learn more information about all your different animals. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Well, thank you so, so much. Uh, guys, what we do at the end of every Hangout is I'd like every class to demute their mic with me all at once. And boys and girls, if you guys could join me uh, in doing that and then saying a huge thank you to everyone at the zoo for joining us today. Uh, so go right ahead. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, for all our classes, we look forward to having you guys back really, really soon. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. And... Uh, yeah, for the zoo, we look forward to having you guys back. We've had insects, we've had mammals, cats, everything you guys can share. It's always appreciated, and uh, thanks so, so much. Bye. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye. For Bye. 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 Could we get a picture? Bye. 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 Can we get a picture? Oh, yeah, with you guys too. So we're gonna gather around so we can get a picture with you guys. Oh. Okay.